Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to Feature Friday. This week is going to be a retro Feature Friday. What we had originally planned to share this week didn't quite get across the finish line. So instead, let's talk about point of sale in Repair Shopper. And the reason I want to talk about this is because there's a ton of new people starting and I realize it's been a really long time since I've talked about the point of sale system and there can be quite a few things that people miss about it or things that people just don't think about and being that there are so many new people joining us uh, I figured why not use this as the best place to talk about it this week so you can see on my screen I do have a POS tab and that can be turned on in the tabs customization of the admin page I'm not going to show that I've covered that in past videos but if you click in tabs customization you can reorder the tabs and all that fun stuff um, but instead on the admin page let's continue down to the POS preferences and from here you can turn the point of sale on and in the additional settings there's a couple additional options here such as don't require the register to close daily uh, you know you use that if you want I'm a big proponent of closing your register every day and counting the drawer down and I'll show you that here in a moment as well you can choose the default POS tab and I'll show you what that means basically this is uh, showing what the default display of the point of sale is and then you can choose to time the point of sale out as well so if you have a front-end register let's say or a front-end computer and potentially somebody may walk away from it this timer if the point of sale tab is left open somewhere in their browser will time their session out after however many minutes you uh, you have entered here also in the point of sale section are cash registers and if you're using a payment gateway like WorldPay for example with EMV terminals you have to set up a cash register uh, and tie that terminal to that and you can see reports you can see what adjustments have been made if someone's withdrawn or deposited money into the point of sale system you can see records for all of that here as well as if the registers open or closed so uh, that's kind of the point of sale settings page at least a high level view of it let's head into the point of sale itself so clicking on POS you'll be greeted if you have a register uh, with where to open the register and here basically what you need to do is count in excuse me my coworker here wants to participate in the video you would count the the change in the dollar amount you have in the POS register uh, to start your day off and this is basically the opening balance for the register and just for the sake of the video I'll put in uh, some change here and hit open register and what we have here is the POS screen itself uh, on the left in the POS preferences section I had the categories tab selected as my default uh, you can choose forms as well forms is kind of where you can either scan uh, excuse me manually search for products by using add from inventory just like you would on an invoice page or the manual item entry again just like you would from any of the places you can add uh, products to like tickets and invoices from there you can also use the main section which essentially is a manual search through all of your products now I like the look of categories and basically this will allow you to drill down into specific categories to see certain products and select them and when you pick a product and let's see here I just need to pick one you'll see that it gets added over here on the right hand side and like in on invoices or the ticket charges screen you can change the value here uh, you can decide if it's going to get discounted you can decide if the invoice is taxable or not and what will happen is it'll just start counting up everything you have and then when you're ready to take payment just decide what payment method you're going to choose I'll choose check 
and it'll take you to a payment confirmation screen and then you would enter the amount and continue on and sales done now let's hop back into POS really quick because I want to talk about the customer so some of you may have noticed that there is a customer selected by default in the POS the reason for that is we're actually building an invoice in the background the point of sale system is kind of like a layer on top of invoices if you will and what's happening is because invoices have to be attached to customers uh, repair shopper is using what we call a default register customer and you can change who that default register customer is and all of that or on the POS itself let's say it's a walk-in customer what this enables you to do is to quickly process a transaction without having to actually get any of their information now you may be saying to yourself well Bobby I want to be able to capture that customer information and you definitely can just click add and change here and you can either look up an existing customer or you can create a new one from this screen as well if you wanted to capture their information for like future purchase history things like that or maybe you're gonna upgrade whatever they're they're purchasing that way you can transition over to a ticket if you wanted to one last thing I wanna well two last things I wanna mention here actually I take that back there's more than that <laughs> you can of course use a barcode scanner with the POS if you're scanning a bunch of products but then over here on the right there is a switch user slash lock by clicking that it'll drop you out of the POS screen into a lock screen where they can enter in a pin next on the controls here you can choose to pop your cash drawer if you wanted to from here or you can make an adjustment clicking make adjustment allows you to do deposits or withdrawals to your register so let's say you took a large cash transaction and you want to move that to the safe or you want to withdraw money to deposit halfway through the day you can do that and it will all be reflected on the Z report which we're about to get into here in a moment once you're done with your day all you need to do is hit close and when you hit that you'll be taken to a close register section that is just like the initial count section of it and I'm just gonna enter in a incorrect value here so that you can see what a variance looks like on the Z report and then when you're done doing all of your counting just hit close register and you'll be taken to a Z report and the Z report will tell you how much the transaction saw in money captured and how much was expected to be present and if I click PDF it'll show the actual Z report and in here it will clearly uh, tell you what the variance is it's important to note that this is kind of records keeping output of sorts and once you click done there's no way to come back and fix this so when people are closing the register it's really important they're accurate with what they're counting because then uh, you as the manager or the owner need to be able to look at this and see if there was a variance and to go back and look at your transactions using like the sales reports for example or the daily payment reports for example to uh, account for why that may have happened but yeah once you're done hit done and the cash register is closed and that's it so that was a whole heck of a lot of information uh, but I felt you know with all the again the new people that are joining us it might be fun to talk about the point of sale system and yeah I, I hope someone learned something out of this or maybe if you're an existing user you saw something you didn't know about and I can't wait to share some of the the really cool new stuff we have coming in the next couple of weeks and thank you for your time I'll see you in the next one